Welcome to AQMD On The Air. I'm your host, Alan Caldwell. Joining me today is the Project Director for the Long Beach Alliance for Children with Asthma, the CEO of the Children's Clinic, and well-respected pediatrician, Dr. Elisa Nicholas. Dr. Nicholas, thank you for joining me. Thank you, my pleasure. Before we get into specifics, can you provide a brief overview of your vision and priorities as a physician that's fighting to reduce childhood asthma? My vision is to, to have a community where children with asthma won't have their asthma triggered, where children who um, develop asthma will be less, there will be lower numbers of children developing asthma because they're not exposed to air pollution or they're not exposed to tobacco smoke. But that will also have physicians that will be able to identify the cough or the wheezing or the persistent cold that goes on, you know, off and on for years as asthma, that they'll know the right medications to give them at the right time, that the children will be able to access those medications because a lot of times there's no funding for them and the devices to take the medication, and that they'll understand how to manage their asthma in partnership with their parents and their physician. And really that they will um, be able to control their asthma both by controlling their environment, and that takes all of us to do that, but also by using the right medications in the right way at the right times with the right um, kind of devices that go along with it. And that's my dream, is that a child should not be crippled by their asthma, and they certainly shouldn't die from their asthma, as we've had in the past. I mean, children have died from their asthma, and to me as a physician, that's totally unnecessary. So my vision is that we're gonna have less children with asthma, and those that have asthma are gonna have their asthma controlled. I know that air pollution is a big part of the problem, particularly as it relates to childhood asthma. Can you talk a little bit about the relationship between asthma and poor air quality? Yes, I, we, we know that air pollution, both indoor and outdoor air pollution, can actually trigger childhood asthma, and it decreases the lung growth of children. But we also know that it can even cause asthma now. We didn't know that 10 years ago. But the data that keeps coming in now is that it's having much more of an effect than we had anticipated. So you can have a child who has a propensity to asthma, and their asthma will get much worse in polluted air. And even if they're allergic to something, if they're exposed to pollution, it lowers the amount of allergen that will trigger their allergy and therefore their asthma. So there is a very strong connection between air pollution and childhood asthma and respiratory illness. Dr. Nicholas, where can the public get more information about the effects of poor air quality and health? Well, the AQMD has a great website, and you can see their initials behind me, but they really do have a wonderful website, and I go to it quite frequently. Um, it's uh, www.aqmd.org gov <laughs> so and also Labaca the Long Beach Alliance for Children with Asthma which we started um, in 1999 has a very nice website it's lbaca.org uh, and then you know you have um, many other websites the American Lung Association Asthma and Allergy Foundation of America um, the federal government NHLBI has a website and lots of different websites that have excellent um, information on asthma it's obvious that this is a very important issue, but I'm curious, is the public actually aware of asthma as it relates to poor air quality? I, I think, you know, when I first started asthma work, uh, as a pediatrician, I've been doing asthma my whole medical career, but really looking at the external influences on childhood asthma more than what's done in the doctor's office, um, I kept coming across information about air pollution and asthma, but nationally people weren't talking about it. I was in a national collaborative for the Long Beach Alliance for Children with Asthma, was part of a Robert Wood Johnson Foundation initiative. And I would bring up the issue of air pollution and, and people um, kind of dismissed it because there wasn't a lot of data. But over the last 10, 12 years, more and more data has, has come through about the effects of air pollution on respiratory illness and children's asthma. But it was really important to get that information out to the public because in order to change public will and to change the will to improve technology for cleaner trucks, cleaner air, um, decreasing pollution, people have to understand the implications of the air pollution and its effect on health. And AQMD has been very important in getting that word out 
because in order to change public will, there has to be public education. And we're not going to change anything unless people think it's important to change it. And so for me to see the role of AQMD and you know the researchers at SC uh, and UCLA, all those things together have really changed the, the discussion and the discourse about air pollution and health. And what we can do in, in Labaca and, and in my world as a pediatrician is really really bring the health issue into the air pollution issue and into the goods movement um, discussion. And I think that's been very, very important. One of the core principles at the AQMD is protecting public health. Can you talk a little bit about how the AQMD is involved in helping reduce asthma amongst children? Um, the AQMD has been very helpful, and, and I know of many things they've done. I don't know the details of them. I know they've funded a lot of the research. I know they've funded some filtration systems. I know they've funded AFA and the American Lung Association for their work in both education and, and advocacy. But personally, I've been most involved in the funding they've given to, to us, both Labaca um, and the Children's Clinic, for our care of um, children and adults with, with asthma. So in our clinics, um, they've funded our community health workers and the cost of uh, our medications and mattress covers and the things that help us actually control the child's asthma on an individual basis, which has been extremely, extremely useful. Um, so we have trained community health workers that can go into homes, assess the environment, um, educate them about the use of medications, provide mattress and pillow covers, and really help them manage their asthma. Um, for Labaca, um, they um, supply the funding for the community health workers that work with other physicians in the community and do a lot of education and have the community health workers partner with those families whose asthma is out of control. It's really, both of those programs are for, for families and children whose asthma is not well controlled. They also fund uh, St. John's uh, Well Child and Family Health Centers in South Central and Compton and Carson area. So we're working all throughout Long Beach, um, San Pedro, Wilmington, and Carson um, to work with those families with children with asthma. And that's, that funding has been very, very, very helpful for us to be able to do the work that we're doing. Dr. Nicholas, I know that you've been on the front line battling asthma. And I know that the AQMD has been working very hard to clean the air that we breathe. Have you seen progress as we continue to work towards reducing the amount of asthma in children? Um, I've been very fortunate to be around long enough to see changes and and what I've seen both in the individual treatment of a child with asthma is tremendous I mean children and families now understand how to handle their asthma in partnership with their provider I've had children that have been in the ER numerous times they've missed schools the mother's missed work and because of the intervention through a community health worker an educated physician that child is not going to the emergency room anymore. She's sleeping through the night. The mother isn't missing work. So those individual stories are incredibly rewarding. But I've also seen the big picture where, you know, in 1999, nobody really talked about air pollution and health and respiratory effects. And now everybody talks about it. It's on the agenda. And for me, that's probably one of the most rewarding things is to see that we've raised awareness through work of USC, AQMD, Labaca, other coalitions, health and air pollution are now linked. And when I go to a meeting and they say, they talk about air pollution and they say, I want to make sure we're not hurting the health of our community, that to me is success. I mean, we have a lot more work to do. There's no question. But I think we've really come a long way. And it's been through partnerships and a lot of hard work and dedication. Before we close, and given your location that you are in Long Beach, can you talk a little bit about the challenges of the goods movement and the ports as it relates to air quality and asthma? Um, Long Beach was kind of unique in this national coalition that we had to treat uh, childhood asthma because we're in, in Long Beach and Long Beach has one of the most largest ports in the world and we're also surrounded by a lot of freeways so the discourse and the discussion that we had was a lot about the air that our children and families are breathing because we have so many trucks on the 710 freeway, we have so many ships that are coming in, we have all the cars, and all of those are point sources of pollution. And that pollution has been shown to affect uh, children and families and their health. 
So I think we had a very unique role in raising awareness about those issues and, and a unique fight for cleaner air and for better technology. And I think, you know, what's encouraging is that the technology exists and it's getting better. It's just that we have to have the political will to invest in that technology to really clean up the air. Um, because we're not going to turn the clocks back. I don't think we're going to get everybody on bicycles in 10 years. I think we can make progress in that, but I think it's going to be hard to really change all that. So I think we have to move, you know, less driving, but we also have to move the cleaner cars and cleaner trucks and cleaner ships and all those things that can decrease the pollution in our areas to working together. So I think that's been the interesting part of the, the work that we've been doing. Dr. Nicholas, I want to thank you for joining me today. I thank you for your fight to address childhood asthma, to clean the air that we breathe. It's been an honor and a pleasure having you on the show. Thank you so much, and thank you to AQMD for all their support. Well, that's our show. Thank you for watching AQMD on the air and helping us clean the air that we breathe. Let's work together.